All right, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be looking at how to use After Effects to recreate the uh, opening title sequence for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um, I went ahead and remade my own with some students, uh, but the original title sequence was actually designed by this VFX studio called Sarovsky. They're based in Chicago. And along with some uh, television opening titles, they've also done uh, the opening or closing titles for major movies like uh, Captain America or Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, etc. Um, awesome, awesome studio, awesome artists. So let's check out kind of how they do some of the basics of their work. <clears throat> if we're looking at my After Effects document, you can see, if I zoom in, with each little segment, there's a handful of layers at work here. Um, while that might look like it's a complicated process, I don't, like step by step, the steps are pretty easy. So I don't think it's something entirely out of the range of my Video 2 students. So let's go ahead and make our own. Um, I'm gonna close this guy out. I'm going to make a new composition, <clears throat> and this preset right here, the HDTV 1080-24, works, really re works really well. It's the 1080p uh, for the resolution. Frame rate, I put at 24 because that's what I filmed at. If you film at 24 or 29, it doesn't really matter. Just keep your frame rate consistent. I'm going to leave the duration at 30 seconds and the uh, background color at black. If I want to trim down the duration later, I can do that. Let's just go ahead and hit OK. Now. I went and pre-recorded some footage of just different students because you want to think about what the student's action is and where that freeze frame is going to be. So if I'm looking at this one with my friend Vector right here, that freeze frame will probably work as he lowers his eyebrows. So I'm going to drag and drop that in there. And zoom in with the timeline to make things a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to scrub through and find that freeze frame moment. Boom, right there. So I'm going to start by hitting Command D on my keyboard. That duplicates the layer. From here, if I hit Option and the bracket, so Option left bracket, that changes the start time to this guy, and then Option or Alt key and right bracket changes the end time to that one. Then on this new duplicate, I'm going to right click, Time, and Freeze Frame. And what that does is that creates a frozen frame for the rest of the clip. But I only want this first one to last about five frames, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to hit Command and the right bracket, one, two, three, four, five. Trim that guy down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this little zoom animation, the zoom action that kind of happens um, in the original title credit. So with this layer selected, if I hit S on the keyboard for scale, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Maybe zoom out so I can see the frame. <clears throat> Move it a little bit just to reframe the composition. And I'm going to Command D again to create another duplicate of this freeze frame. Bring it over here. Maybe make this guy last a little bit more than a second. And then once again, zoom in a little bit more. Make sure I can actually see what I'm doing. And boom, there I go. So there'll be my final freeze frame. So now if I play through that just real quickly, it zooms in. I'm going to go ahead and mute that clip just so that we don't need to hear it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer once again. Uh, I love duplicating layers and making edits. You'll, you'll see why. So I've got this one, which is going to be my background. I'm going to go ahead and rename it by hitting return to the enter key and background. And then I'm going to rename this one subject just so I know which one I'm working with. <clears throat> On my subject, I'm going to create a mask of just my subject, of just Victor right here, <clears throat> by grabbing the pen tool, G on the keyboard right up here. And I'm going to make a really quick rough mask. Uh, I recommend taking some time and actually using the pen tool. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, uh, there's a million and one tutorials about it on YouTube. Uh, I think I have my own, I think. Um, I'm gonna, but I'm making this a little bit rough just for the sake of making the video a little bit quicker. <clears throat> and what this is going to do is it's going to, on this layer, hide out everything that is not in my mask. So because the layers are the same, I don't see anything right now, but if I hide this background layer, boom, you see that I just have vector um, masked out. So open this layer up, and open the mask up. I can feather the mask a little bit just to kind of compensate for uh, my rough selection. And I can even drop the mask, mask expansion a little bit. <clears throat> and there I go. So now I have uh, basically a duplicate of the subject sitting on top of the background so I can put things in between it. Let's take a look at what that looks like. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and review that layer again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that kind of like... Uh, colored bar that comes through. So I'm going to go to layer, new shape layer. And on this shape layer, I can go ahead and add different things. I'm going to add a rectangle. 
and I got my little rectangle here. And on the rectangle path, if I unlink the height and the width, I can increase the height a little bit and increase the width way past the, uh, the border because I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to have it move on and move off. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to add a fill to that rectangle. Uh, I can change the fill color up here. I'm going to give it like this nice cyan. Color doesn't really matter. I use, use solid colors to the bar and we'll change the color later. And then on this whole shape layer, if I hit R for rotation, uh, you can rotate it a little bit just to give a little bit more of a dynamic composition. I use like 8 degrees or negative 8 degrees. Um, let's, let's use negative 8 for now because I think it works better with that frame. <clears throat> Position it. And then if I put the shape layer in between the subject and the background layer, now that bar is behind my subject, depending on how well I masked out my subject. <clears throat> so for the next layer, uh, when that first freeze frame happens, it creates this kind of like darker color overlay on the background. So let's go ahead and make another new layer. This one's going to be a new solid. I'm going to take that same cyan and make it a little bit darker. Hit OK. I'm going to change the blending mode here from normal to soft light. If you don't see the blending mode, you just got to turn on this guy right here. So from normal to soft light. Where to go? There it is. <clears throat> and I'm going to drop it uh, below the shape layer but above my background. Uh, I also like to give the background a little bit of a Gaussian blur uh, just to create that kind of depth of field effect. So if you go to effect, blur and sharpen, Gaussian or Gaussian blur, <clears throat> and then just a little bit to create a sort of artificial depth of field effect when we get this in there. <clears throat> so next I'm going to start adding the text. So if I go to the text tool up here, I can just click once and start typing. Um, I move my window right here. <clears throat> the font that they use, I think, is Univer uh, uh, or Interstate. Both are kind of uh, expensive fonts. I am going to use uh, Futura, but bold, oblique, something just dynamic. Um, and I'm going to type out a student's name. Vector is his first name. It's actually Victor, but we call him Vector. Um, and I'm going to give this the same rotation. So I'm going to hit R, and I'm going to rotate it by negative 8 degrees. Turn off caps lock. There we go. Increase the text. Place it in. And I'm going to command D to duplicate my text layer. And then change it to his last name. Santa. Boom. So now I've got my two new text layers. Place them about where I want them. I like to have the... Uh, like one of the text layers overlapping the uh, subject just to create a little bit more depth. And then what I'm going to do is to make the bar move on with the text, I'm going to parent the text layer the uh, that's on the bar to the shape layer. And I do that by dragging this pick whip right here. I'm going to drag it to the shape layer. And that way, if I keyframe the position of the shape layer, the text will move with it. So I'm going to hit P to find the position of the shape layer. <clears throat> and now I'm going to say that it moves on seven frames after it starts. So I move my um, play up to the start and then command right seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> and I'm going to drop my keyframe for position right here of my shape layer. Now if I go back and I change the position, you see it because I parented it, it moves at the same time. And now, over those seven frames, after it zooms in, it moves on. Uh, for the other text, I like to keyframe the scale. So let's say that, hey, at seven frames, the scale of his first name is right here, and then maybe it kind of bursts on from being really big or something. Let's see what that looks like real quick. All right, so I need to trim my layers, um, but we're getting pretty close. I'm going to grab all the layers that I have not yet trimmed. And then again, option left bracket to choose the start point. And then option right bracket to choose the end point. Um, few extra things we can do. I love adding motion blur. So let's activate our motion blur right here. Um, and then turn it on for like the text layers and the shape layers. <clears throat> so that you just get that little bit of more dynamics when it moves on. Boom. 
And I mean, that's pretty much it. After that, all I really need to do is uh, potentially add music to it, uh, add more, definitely fix this uh, mask a little bit or take a little bit more time when I'm penciling out my mask. But uh, there you go. Uh, really quickly, the basics of the Brooklyn Nine-Nine intro credits.